This is part 2 of our turtle dissection series. If you haven't yet, check out part 1 here. In order to take a look at the internal anatomy, first we'll have to cut into the shell. This is pretty difficult, but the best way to do it is through these hinges. First, we'll use a saw or a bone drill to cut through this thin segment of bone right here that connects the carapace to the plastron. For us, this part has already been done. Then, I'll use a scalpel to cut through the tough membranes that attach the carapace to the plastron. Be careful not to damage any of the internal structures or injure yourself. We kept most of the cutting footage to show you just how difficult this process can be. One thing that helps though is to get a friend to help you. One person can kind of try to pry open the shell while the other person works on cutting the membrane and thin pieces of bone that is holding the carapace and the plastron together. So here you can see that we cut through the muscles of the lower abdomen and I'll just remove the rest of the muscles from this half of the turtle so that we can see all the internal structures. One thing to note, like I mentioned before, you can see here that the turtle's scapula or their shoulder joint is inside the shell. This right here is actually the shoulder blade and you can see that when I move the arm, it moves the shoulder blade. So first, let's discuss the respiratory system. You can see this translucent tube right here, and this is the trachea. The trachea connects the external nares, or the nostrils, to the lungs. As you can see, it has these rings of cartilage around it to keep it from collapsing under pressure, kind of like vacuum cleaner hoses. You can actually feel these same cartilage rings if you feel down the front of your neck on your own trachea. The trachea is pretty short and it splits into a fork right down here. Zooming in, 
we can see exactly where the trachea splits into the two bronchi. And as you can see, the bronchi still have those rings of cartilage to keep them from collapsing under pressure. Each of these bronchi lead into each lung, which we'll take a look at later since the lungs are kind of buried under some of the other organs. Moving on, let's now discuss the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system plays a vital role in transporting oxygen, nutrients, and waste products throughout the turtle's body. And the most important part of the cardiovascular system is the heart right here, which is the pump that sends blood circulating throughout the turtle's body. It's inside this slippery sack, can't really see it through the video, but it's pretty slippery, called the pericardial sac, which protects the heart and makes sure that it can pump with little friction. Now I'll cut it open to get a better look at the heart. Here you can see the three chambers of the heart. Except for crocodiles, which have a four-chambered heart, all reptiles, including turtles, have a three-chambered heart. So one, two, and three. This means it has two atria, one here and the other here, but only one ventricle right here. The disadvantage of this is that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can mix in the ventricle right here, which reduces the efficiency of the heart. In humans and other mammals, the heart has four chambers, which allows for complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. But the lower efficiency of the three-chambered heart isn't a huge problem for reptiles like the turtle since they have a slower metabolism and thus don't need that much oxygen anyway. And here you can also see the aorta, which leads out from the ventricle and carries oxygenated blood into the body. Moving on, let's look at the digestive system. The digestive system of turtles is well adapted to their diverse diets, which can range from herbivorous to omnivorous or carnivorous, depending on the species. Starting from the beak, which we saw before, the esophagus right here connects the mouth of the turtle to the stomach. The esophagus transports food from the mouth to the stomach using a process called peristalsis which involves rhythmic contractions of the muscles in the esophagus. Before we get to the rest of the digestive system, let's first talk about the liver so that we can remove it and get it out of the way. I've taken the heart out so that we can see the liver better. The liver is this large organ right here, and it plays a crucial role in various metabolic processes. It synthesizes and stores glycogen, a complex sugar that serves as an energy reserve. It also helps break down and eliminate harmful substances, including metabolic waste products, drugs, and toxins that enter the body. Lastly, the liver secretes a substance called bile, which aids in the breakdown and absorption of fats in the digestive system. Here on the underside of the liver, we can see the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a small pouch that stores the bile made by the liver. From the gallbladder, 
the bile is secreted into the small intestine to help with digestion. After removing the liver, we can see the stomach right here. So it's this long structure. The stomach is where the initial digestion of food takes place. The stomach secretes digestive enzymes and acids to break down the food into smaller particles and begin the process of chemical digestion. The stomach varies in size and complexity depending on the turtle's diet. Carnivorous turtles generally have a simpler stomach, while herbivorous turtles may have a more specialized stomach to aid in the breakdown of plant matter. Now I'm going to cut into the stomach to see the inside. When I cut into the stomach, you can see that it has these folds. These folds are called rugae, and they function in increasing the surface area of the stomach. The rugae can also stretch out, like an accordion, to increase the volume of the stomach. Thanks for watching and check out part 3 of our turtle dissection series where we cover the rest of the internal anatomy.